motion was moved on this matter. A certain friend of mine, Honorable Feleke, spoke on this motion because the motion tabled on the matters of urgent national importance. So rules are waived. If it's in the senior section 43, but the 43. And he spoke. The move of the motion brought the motion in a way it should be done. My colleague and brother in the National Assembly, Honorable Faleke, did not speak onto that motion in the way of parliamentary processes. Privileges were abused because accusations were heard on me. I was judged. My wife was judged. That is not is unparliamentary. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister of, of uh, Labour has abused his of, office. And if I were the President, I would get him removed immediately based on facts. The NSITF that we are talking about, they, they, they submitted the budget of NSITF to him. He single-handedly altered all the budgets, altered the figures. And when the, the men and women at that agency protested, he threatened to remove them. What did he do? The minister inserted a two billion uh, uh, commission project, two billion naira what? He inserted two billion for collection, I mean commission on collection, something that has never happened in that agency. In other words, he needed the, the management and staff of that agency to, I mean, the management and the, and the executive committee of that agency to be out of office so that he can, he, can, uh, he can implement that budget. What did he do, Mr. Speaker? He removed all the people who are against that decision and left it to the people who never knew about the argument between them. That is one. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, we have ministers, especially this, this particular minister, he single-handedly uh, nominated the contractor that bought all the vehicles. What wow. really five million last year in 2019 budget? And this, these men, the executive members, said this 2020 they will not allow that to happen again. So the moment the budget was approved, 2020 budget, he felt that he would not have control of those things he are inserted in the budget if these people, are, if these people remain there. And the only way to do it is to send them away. That is, that, that's, the, that's the cross of the matter. That's the cross of the matter. Mr. Speaker, we are entitled to Camry cars here as our official car. A minister of the Federal Republic will be provided with his convoy of vehicle by the ministry. But Ngige, that is not enough for Ngige. He went ahead and compared Every, uh, the, this same processor of NSITF to buy him a, a, an SU, uh, a Toyota Land Cruiser and a Hilux in 2019. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this same minister has inserted four SUVs in 2020 budget, which the men and women that he decided to send away refused to say we will not implement this budget. These are, the, these, are, these are the issues. Mr. Speaker, and it may also interest you, honorable colleagues, to note that his wife, Dr. Ngige, Dr. Mrs. Ngige, worked work in, uh, he, he took advantage of the fact that his wife works with the, uh, with the head of service and got approval signed by his wife to the Ministry of Labor to, to, to appoint an insurance broker for insurance worth 100 million every year. This letter, this approval was issued, signed by his wife on the 6th of May, Mr. Speaker, to him. And he, gave, he wrote approval immediately to NSITF to accept that broker on the 10th of May. 
What is speed of light? She had to be suspended. But she will go to the board panel. This panel is headed by the board. The board had an audit committee. And this audit committee will head the investigation. Their chairman will head the investigation. And what uh, we decided to do, head of service, because there are serious uh, misconduct, bring uh, 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 a director to look into in the panel, not this side. Accountant General of the Federation, same. Auditor General of the Federation, same. BPPDG, we wrote him to give us somebody. In fact, before then, we asked BPP to even do us a procurement audit. At the same time, we told the Auditor General of the Federation. So these people are in this committee. They are people with integrity, worth of experience. These are the issues. These are the issues that they want to, co they want to conceal by sacking these people. And you are a senator. The fact is, in an investigative hearing or when you appear before the parliament, you are at liberty to decline to answer a question or not to respond to a question. That is your personal liberty and personal privilege. But what we are saying here, I appreciate your concern. Like you rightly say, the parliamentary privileges, he has exercised those privileges, but the parliament recognized what he should ask on the issues that were brought on the floor on that day. That's why the votes and proceedings did not carry Palakis accusation or allegation or whatever he said against you or against your wife on the body of the investigative resolution. Minister, thanks for your observation. You will understand, Honorable Minister, that we are representatives of the people. And as representatives of the people, we have rights to ask questions. And you also have the right as a Nigeria to respond to those questions. Before now, you are on this side of the height. Today, you are on the other side of the height. And let me also say, Honorable Minister, if you say I made judgments before, I mean, I, uh, using my privilege, Mr. Minister, you also use your privilege as a minister to adjudge the suspended members of NSITF as being guilty. And that is the okay. essence of uh, this investigation. Honorable uh, Minister, we are here to look at the facts, and the facts is before us. I just want to observe one thing. Your Excellency, I have listened I carefully come, to Honorable Faleke. If, in good conscience, he wants to stay on with you, fine. It means I have another alternative. You will meet me in court after this place. Honorable, honorable, you have damaged my reputation. Uh, honorable because you have legislative immunity, you damage my reputation. Uh, honorable no, chair. I will not allow you. Honorable chair. Can we? As a former senator, you will agree with me that under the constitution, yes, there is no document on that in Nigeria yes. that the parliament cannot ask for. Okay, no problem. Uh, let me let me ask. We can you. even ask Mr. President. I will. I will ask Come and testify. By himself. Honorable Valenke, you, you are dead right. I am one of the core advocates of a new normal. We have to change the narratives as the chairman of the board of NSITF started yesterday. I gladly align myself with that. We don't want an atmosphere of rancor. We will not be able to achieve the desired result. We are here to put justice to the key issues before us. Who are like my junior brothers, except for like they say it's up to 60, I don't know. I'm 60 plus. Uh -huh. So you are near my age, but I'm at least seven years older than you, I'm sure. I'm the same age with your mentor in Lagos, as you are. <laughs> and I was governor with him at the same time. He was a senator, but I was a senator. I'm a two-time minister, isn't it? 
Prime Minister. But he won all his elections very well. No problem about that. Just like you won your own in Kogi State very well. Yeah. And uh, you are now the Deputy Governor and Governor of Kogi State. Mr. Mr. Minister, please respond. Well, I'm responding, my friend. If you have me, I have I, 10 I, times. I won. I'm a Lagos boy. I'm a Lagos boy. You are just a small boy in Lagos. Uh -huh. Look at, look at this boy. Mushim boy is talking to a, a BI boy. I live in Victoria Island. Look at Mushim boy. From Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Just go. I don't get time for you. Kilo share. Okay. Abiodu Faleke. I represent the people of Lagos. I'm from Ikeja, and I'm very, very proud to be a Mushin boy. Please, I'd like us to put our personal and our emotional sentiment behind so that we can put these issues of national importance, people's livelihoods and employment uh, future, uh, future is put on the line. There are allegations of corruption and gross misconduct breach in procurement, which are very weighty. I'd like us to not use mere representations and sentiments to be cloud our emotions in discharging these duties. Please, I would crave your indulgence, honorable colleagues, to give me your protection. It wasn't funny. It's still not funny. But sometimes it's better to make light of situations that are ordinarily not meant to be funny. Um, we'll take that up, the back channel, uh, uh, on the issue of what happened with the minister yesterday.